All right, welcome as we get ready here for our first operation and see what we've got with us uh, this time around. Uh, I'm playing with a character pool of some old favorites you might recognize, or maybe you won't, depending on how many uh, videos and streams you've been watching of mine over the past few years. Uh, this is a mostly blind run of Long War 2 for me. I haven't really played a lot of uh, Long War 2. I had a little bit of access to it before things came out. Oh, I see myself, so I'm in again. I always show up in my character pools. Um, I've, uh, oh my god, there's Kilray, this looks like a good squad. Uh, anyway, yeah, I've had a little bit of experience with Long War 2, and by little, I mean, like, you know, five or six missions. Uh, I've played, you know, like, an evening uh, of it, and I haven't got far at all, so I don't know anything about its strategy layer, really, apart from the basic changes you already know about by looking at the blog posts. Uh, I don't know much about anything, really, so this is gonna be fairly blind, we're gonna be learning things on the fly, which is gonna be pretty new for me. Holy crap, that's Soylent. Okay, we've got a hell of a squad here. Anyway, I don't know anything and we're gonna be bad at this. Let's just hop straight in and learn it as we go. Squad consumer active. This looks like a very, uh, a very male squad. But I don't think we've got a single woman in this squad. We've got Chad Kilroy. Ocelot. Well, there's me. Glenn Friendly is here. Glitch Bauer finally gets a campaign. Soylent Green is here in beautiful camouflage. Uh, Hulk. Hulk Marcia, if you remember the Hulk streams. And Awo is here to round it out. This is a serious squad of uh, absolutely serious operators. And we're going to see what we can do here with these guys. I'm just going to go ahead and knock knock create it equally off. I'm not really a fan of not created equally uh, in standard kind of long warish play. And there we go. Now all men are created equally. Four health. What are we working with here? Chad Kilroy. Four health, 65 aim, five hack, 25 will, and five dodge. I like that. Let's get to work. All right, so I'm looking around the map here and I'm seeing uh, we're kind of a bit in the middle-ish. I'd like to get into a good fighting position and then try and work out which direction the enemies are in and then lay a kind of uh, broken concealment overwatch ambush on them. This is an interesting looking building up here, so uh, we might move up and have a look at that. Probably one of the things that's going to affect gameplay the most that you won't see in a default Long War 2 game uh, is I've got a bunch of uh, extra map mods on that add uh, a lot more customization or a lot more replayability to the maps by adding new parcels, plots, and etc. Uh, to the generation system. Uh, and honestly, I haven't played a lot of XCOM 2 seriously since installing them, so a lot of these maps will be quite new to me. Like, I've never seen this before. So let's move up with... Who wants to be lead scout? Soylent wants to be first. I can tell. Orders confirmed. I want to move. This is, uh... Oh, we're in the middle of, like, a suburban advent troop transport base. That's interesting. This is a lot of firsts for me. I've, uh... It's actually been a long time since I've really... Closing on target position seriously now. played XCOM 2 at this point. Moving on target location. Good copy. Moving on target. Yeah, we haven't got a time Eda. limit as far as I'm aware on this first mission. Understood. Moving out. So let's just hop into cover. Roger that. And use it as best as we can. Headed there now. Because we don't want to get that uh, XCOM 2 specific problem where enemies reveal you and your concealment on their turn and then kill you. So let's stay low for this first turn. Try and get some audio. Grab some where they are. Roger. I've got my eyes on. Nothing. Alright, we're going to take it slow out from here. We can't hear where they are, but, uh... I'll take a guess that, judging by how big the map is, let's see, they're probably in this direction. I think I can almost see a map edge from here. So I'm guessing they're probably towards the troop transport base itself. We're gonna hop down with Soylent into cover. Moving Hope there's no civilians position. down here. I could be a little bit more careful here if I was, uh, being a bit smarter. Vanilla XCOM 2 was, uh, a bit more forgiving of an affair, so I really need to jumpstart my brain. Rolling. Back into being absolutely paranoid, absolutely uncompromising in how I do this. Confirmed. Otherwise, I'm gonna have some uh, nasty issues. Roger that. And that's uh, why I'm playing with such a all-star character pool as well. These, this is just like under a quarter of the character pool potentials. There's a lot more old favorites in here I want to see. Uh, and I decided. Moving. Uh, I like playing with random soldiers. It's fun. 
but I decided the best way to really make myself uh, feel punished for mistakes is to play it with all my favorite troopers. Because then I'm really going to hate it when they die. Move into position. Alright, let's overwatch and uh, overwatch. let's watch out here. Shh. I think I heard something! So we got audio up ahead. Now this is an interesting piece of terrain here. We can always fall back if contact's too tough, cross the road and really put them into a no man's land situation where they got a lot of half cover, some heavy cover, uh, but a lot of half cover, and we've got this no man's land to make them cross. Uh, in a mission of no timers, you can obviously do that. In most missions, you can't. I'm not a big fan of timers, uh, personally. Confirmed. A lot of people give me a lot of crap for that and say it's just because I like to overwatch for 50 turns in a row and take my time, but mainly it's just I feel like it kind of limits your gameplay. I feel like timers kind of make you go, uh, you know, aggressive or bust. Uh, Long War 2 does keep the timers in, Position but confirmed. on the other hand, I've heard they've tried to include some ways you can work around the timers with abilities and with the way you infiltrate missions. Heading to that location. So I'll uh, look at this with a fresh eye, and I won't pass too much judgment on the timers until I've experienced them in this mod yet. Headed there now. Mm -hmm. Move you all up. That's affirmative. And get yourself up to cover. Roger that. Got it coming, guys. Okay. Door on our left. Maybe a gate. Let's get ourselves over here and have a look. Closing on target position now. Move it friendly. I hear bad boys over here. I just don't see them. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you down here. Orders confirmed. Moving out. Okay, still no eyes. How do we want to engage this? I'd assume we're going to have more contact on the right, but otherwise this could be a great position to engage from. Let's just get moving up for now. On my way. In XCOM 2 with concealment, your main thing, because it's it's a lot easier than XCOM 1 where you didn't have concealment and every move could be an activation. So now. you generally only move one person at a time in a conga line. Heading out. Um, XCOM 2 is much more forgiving of concealment in its CLM. initial movement. Um, I have mixed feelings on that as a design element. Uh, I've a lot of my uh, a lot of my initial feelings about XCOM 2 have kind of matured on a lot since playing it uh, a lot over the past year. With Concealment, I think it does make things easier and more forgiving. Um, and I think it also kind of dilutes a lot of the skill that was in XCOM 1, which was a lot of the skill of winning a fight was actually making sure you were moving in the right way to set yourself up for success in that fight. The preparation phase, if you want to call it that. Confirmed. So Concealment uh, in XCOM 2, uh, you okay. can do a lot more with it. Instead of having the conga line, uh, you can spread everyone out and kind of just, all right, spread everybody out, scout around till you find the enemy, then collect everyone and do some teamwork. Moving out. In vanilla, Moving I to definitely grew to, to not be a fan of Concealment because I felt like it was one of the things that made the game too easy. Hello. The Advent officers seem more capable than the grunts. We're not sure whether to chalk it up to training or stricter mind control. That's not great. That drone could hop down and uh, get you. Come back, uh, Ocelot. You don't want to be there. So how do we want to take this? Not great cover on the left. I think we need to pull back right away. Roger that. Have a good look at where they're patrolling. Good copy. Moving on target. Let's keep uh, Hulk on the position. right. And let's keep wide eyes on this contact as best we can. Okay, we got a captain and a drone. And two troopers. That's a pretty small pod. This gives us an interesting opportunity. Because this pod's pacing up and down these stairs by the look of it, if they go back up. That puts them out of line of sight if we set our boys up right. So what we want to do here is obviously XCOM 2 of Concealment uh, has been balanced so that you can't overwatch straight out of it. Uh, and then initially the cheese... Uh, at the start of XCOM 2, uh, was uh, in pre-release just to let them path into you and then you got an Overwatch turn on them when they activated you on their turn. Now, of course, Jake brought in the solution, Jake and Mark and everyone brought in a solution where if aliens path into you on their turn and you're a concealment, they're likely to shoot you on that reveal turn to discourage that play. But there's still something we can do about that. 
Uh, but first things first, let's get people in a position. So I'm going to bring... Let's see, we're going to want to jump you in a cover there. There, 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 there. We've got great positions to take here. Except I want to get a little bit more recon here first. Because I feel like we have more contact on the left there and I want to see it. Rolling. So we're going to move friendly up and yes. These guys contact. make up the bulk of the advent forces we've dealt with. They're disciplined and well equipped, but their obedience makes them predictable. Another foursome. Looks like we got. Uh, I haven't actually played with a Long War Alien pack at all that much yet, apart from those missions of Long War Two. I said I played, you know, four or five. So I'm vaguely aware of these guys. Are like, you know, Grenadier slash Rocketeer. I think it's a Grenadier, uh, Grunt, Gunner, and Sentry. I think, but I don't really know what the Sentry does. So we want to keep our eyes on these guys. Probably hunker friendly up there. Um, probably bias our ambush. More back towards this cover to stay out of the way, so... If we bring you... to here... Moving to position. And move Hulk up. Heading to that location. And I bring AWO over. Gato. And I'm gonna bring Oslo up to here. Heading there now. I'm gonna start to think about how I wanna handle this. Moving out. Probably want to bring more people over to the right. On my way. To get this ambush. Moving to designated position. And then we stay away from that pot on the left, but we'll see exactly out. where that pot on the left First wants to go in a second. So these guys are moving in. That's uh unexpected and not great. They could reveal one tile off. Okay, so we could be in for a not great uh, opening right here. I feel like these guys are going to turn around, but if they don't, we're going to have a big old uh, chain activation going on here, which is going to be very, very bad. Now, I kind of assumed when I moved uh, friendly up that these guys, because we'd been hanging out here for so long and they hadn't buffed into us yet, that they were just going to path back up the stairs, and that might be a deadly assumption to have made. So we need to make sure everyone's on overwatch so that if they get pathed into here, uh, we have plenty of firepower, to back up uh, friendly so that he doesn't get flank killed by these guys. And we want to make sure we're not letting that happen. So we're gonna bring Beagle back. Orders confirmed. Moving we're just gonna try to get everyone's guns on target here. To make sure we're not letting a uh, friendly flap in the wind in this situation. Good copy, moving on target. We need to get you in position as well, AWO. Let's get you over here. And that kind of hamstrings our options, because Friendly can't run back without uh, attracting everything. We're just going to hope these guys move backwards, but if they don't, hopefully the amount of uh, fire we can put out is going to protect Friendly. Scanning. Oh no, moving to Overwatch. Got it covered. It's going to be tight. Got it covered. Question is, do I Overwatch Friendly, or do I maybe go for the Hunker? Uh, I don't... Hunker's not going to help him if... Well, only he'll be in... Yeah. Probably the best thing to do is to go for a Hunker here. Alright, and indeed they're going to move back. Which is what we were hoping. We want these guys to get out of the way, and then we can waste the other pod. But we definitely want to pull back at this point. So we need to pull our guys uh, back who aren't already in detection range. Now, Friendly still is. You guys are now there. So quickly, before these guys path around, we want to get AWO back out of the line of uh, detection very quickly the rest of you are just gonna hold you're gonna keep on holding friendly but the rest of you are just gonna overwatch eyes on the prize. Roger, I've got my eyes on and just hope that what we've seen continues that is these guys aren't gonna come any further than we've been holding Roger, but if they vary their on. patrol up randomly we could be in for a very sudden engagement these guys are going to go sit in the corner. Good boys. And these guys are pathing back. So we can see, if these guys stick to this patrol route, that our ideal is to pull back so that, basically, we can't see, if we use our line of sight preview tool, we want to pull back so that we can't see uh, up to here, which is where that second pod is patrolling. We don't want to see those guys just yet. So if we pull back to, basically, uh, behind this car line of cover, we can hopefully get eyes on, or even over to here is probably the best thing, looking at the way these guys patrol. We can probably break a window, get a concealment trap on these troops over here, and get a nice, nice little ambush over here. 
can't quite pull you back just yet, apparently, but we'll keep on holding. Um, with that in mind, uh, we'll probably hold where we are right now, but we're going to get ready to switch over and buy us for that. Overwatch. Beat the fire shots. Moving to Overwatch. Drone is forgot of you. I'm on it. Affirmative. Eyes on the prize. Okay, these guys are coming back. Those guys are going away. We have the option of just launching an ambush on this first pod now. Uh, if we want to hedge our bets. Uh, that's going to require... And we can get a solid grenade on, which isn't guaranteed to do a lot. Uh, we can also launch a flash on them, which is going to make them fairly toothless. Uh, and at this point, that might be the best thing to do, because it's going to be difficult to get one pod but not the other. If I just go for the attack now, uh, I can probably pull that off pretty, pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Soylent uh, and pull a little flashbang action over here. Flash these guys up. I'm going to go ahead and start this engagement off. Light them up. Let's get that flash, disorient them. We've been spotted. They're going to scurry into cover. That flashbang is going to make it hard for them to scurry into good cover, and this guy has been uh, caught out as a result. He's in a poor position. Let's get to work. Uh, we can pull a slot back, but we might want a grenade with him. You are not flanked, Aewo. Don't lie to me. Aewo thinks he's flanked, and I'm scared he is. He seems very convinced. Um, let's see. You guys are in great position to grenade. We don't want to move up too far, because then we're going to reveal bad time, boys. Uh, on the other hand, I haven't heard anything from the right. I haven't seen any patrols from the right. And that's a nice little flank on this captain, so I'm going to move. Whatever you say. Lost a lot of rounds. We're safe, no pull on the right. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and probably take a shot on this boy. Light him up. Nice shooting. First blood. You know, that was good. First blood. To revolver. Chalashashka. Ocelot. Uh, and we're going to follow that up as best as we can. So uh, we can just bring... We can start grenading that back guy. We haven't got suppression yet, so I'd like to start grenading on him. We don't want to move up too far, remember. That's just uh, asking for trouble. But we can bring Kilroy across. I'm trusting you here. Kilroy can take a second shot with his M4 on this trooper who's flanked himself. Lighten them up. That's what we like to see. We're back with America's finest service rifle, motherfucker. Oh god, everyone's going to debate that. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, um... <laughs> We need to probably get some grenades on this stupid drone, because grenades are stupid and I hate them. I mean, sorry, drones are stupid and I hate them. I, I love grenades, even though they're broken. Um, so probably, let's see. We need to deal with the drone first, because the drone is the more lethal threat, believe it or not, right now. It's going to get us the quickest. Let's do this. I'd like to spend one grenade on this situation, if I can. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do with you, Bauer. I want you to be in heavy cover or bust here, Bauer. I don't want to do much of you if you can't get the heavy cover. Uh, can I can I shoot from here? Yeah, I can I can pull back and shoot from here. So I'm gonna pull a grenade with uh, your boy Beegs. Throwing grenade. I'm gonna frag out, try and take some armor off. Which is the main thing. I'm just hedging my bets here, trying to take a little bit of armor off before we then follow up with Bauer. Exalt's finest. Do want to graze on the drone? Not ideal. What do we got? Two to five. At this point, I reckon another grenade is the safest bet here uh, to follow up. I could go around for the flank with friendly, but that's going to reveal. We don't want to do that. Now, a double grenade is likely to finish that grunt off. So let's see. If we bring AWO over, uh, it really relies on us getting a nice grenade on this drone, I think. I don't want to move to just there. But here, I think, if we use our line of sight previewer, I don't think we should be revealing anything too nasty. On your order. Oh, though I could be wrong. Wow, I'm so stupid. <laughs> and I'm definitely wrong. Those guys saw me on the last tile through the window. So that's going to make an easy engagement harder because I wanted to get fancy. On the other hand, I have got an explosive tank I can blow up. And I think I can maybe flash these guys. Maybe if I blow that tank up first. This is what happens when you want to get fancy, is the problem. This is when Beagle wants to get fancy. Uh, it does reveal more ground for me to use, though. Let's see. I'm probably going to want to bring AO up. 
Now I definitely want to grenade that drone. This is what I was talking about with how I gotta get used to not being complacent. I should have known that could have revealed. We're gonna take that drone out nice and sassy with AOE's grenade. Now we want to blow that tank up and then we also want to get a flashbang on these guys. You do not seem to have a great flashbang. Ooh, I saw it. There we go. I see. You have one guy flashed. It's not ideal. I think you've got the better flashbang prospects, maybe? You can get two of them, yeah. So we want to take Hulk. I mean, I could just flash. Nah, screw it. We'll go ahead and hit that tank with Hulk's M4. Take that bad boy out. Handle that problem. I hear another pot over to our left, so we're going to want to watch that. Now, I can get a flashbang that doesn't quite hit that guy on the side. That's fine. He'll be he'll be up. But we'll flashbang these three. This one's going to be bright. And next turn, we'll handle these guys. So a shoddy, uh, a shoddy activation that wasn't necessary. And a sloppy start to a Long War II campaign. But we'll see if we get punished for it. Hey, I'm not perfect. Or even that good when it comes down to it. Just here doing my thing. Please don't hit me. Okay, that's good. So that's a non-flashbang guy taking a I'm shot. Fire. That boy is charging in with both his movements. The gun is moving up. Trinity is taking a slight move and he's overwatching. Alright. So we've got two guys who have moved straight up. We do not want to push up. Let's learn from our mistakes at least. So we do not want to push up any further because I hear more footsteps on the left there. I don't want to play the game of fun with that. Now if I move up, I've got a flank on this guy. The main issue is this guy at the back is going to try and shoot me. And even flashbanged, Overwatch likes to hit. So we don't want to play that game of chicken too hard. Let's see if we can't just sneak around here. And I don't think we'll reveal the Overwatch. I can handle that. With Ocelot. I'm going to go for uh, all or nothing flank here. And also, it's going to take him down. Not too shabby. Keep on slaying him, Ocelot. Ocelot cannot be stopped. Ocelot says he's flanked here. I don't know if I believe that. I certainly don't want to believe that. Uh, we need to find a way to deal uh, with this back Overwatch. I could chuck another flashbang. Uh, it's a difficult situation. I kind of need to run it. This guy's got a mag rifle. I kind of need to run it. Who wants to run it? Kilroy, Bauer, Bauer's got the skill, Bauer can run it, no problem, he will be a-okay. If I run on the dash, or even friendly, friendly ain't no, ain't no scamp. Now Bauer can probably do it, Bauer's probably the best person to do it. Um, if I run him up to here, that should handle business. Yeah, run him like that. Bauer shouldn't get hit by the flashbang on dash, overwatch, but we'll see. Yeah, no worries. And that gets rid of it for our blue movers to move up. And, well, blue move all over these chumps. We're going to run up with Hulk. I'm on it. Please, no more pods. Thank you. I don't think we can do a double grenade on these two. And we can't rely on these grenades to really destroy cover that much uh, in Long War 2. But we can get some shots on. I think this is probably the turn uh, to just uh, spend some more grenades if we can. Long War introduces a one turn cooldown to throwing things, unless you have a grenade launcher. So unfortunately we can't do a lot of throwing things though it seems. Which leaves our options rather limited here. That's not something I was paying attention to, which I probably should have been. Uh, Doomguy again can go for the flank, but it's not going to be worthwhile in the long run I don't think. It's not going to pay off the way I want it to. I'm rather close to a, a tank there that I'd like to fall back from as well. I need to get him some better cover. Now, if I move to the left, I'm sure I'm going to activate, so I don't want to go left. Not too far. Let's see. You can see that gunner, so if we could just kill that gunner, that would be good enough. Yeah, maybe see what I can do from the back here. Start moving around the side and start seeing what I can do from the back. Darkest. I think what I'm going to have to do here is take a bunch of low percentage shots. There you go, and bet on magic happening. So that gun is dead with a follow-up grenade. Nice shot from AWO. Very, very nice. 
Uh, the rest of us, we can probably land a flashbang on these two to keep them pinned, uh, and a follow-up grenade to screw over the rest of those guys back there. Let's get Soylent moving. Again, we come back to this. I need to move Beegs around. Or Doom Guy around. I could probably move up to this position and be alright. He said not learning anything. Okay, I'll go. Push up aggressively, Doom Guy. There you go. Get him friendly. Now we got a 49 to finish, and I like those odds. What am I saying? Nope! This squad does not disappoint. It's dead. It has to be dead. Friendly is slaying him. That's gonna let Beegs move up to that Finally. position. Which lets Soylent move up to this position, though that's not gonna get me too many What's over there? better shots, but that's alright. So that's gonna give Beegs. I suppose we might want to do some more volume of fire. There's not a lot else to do here. Uh, let's see. We'll move you up to here, Kilroy. Probably spin another flashbang to keep these two well and suppressed. Take a good look. So stun him, Hulk. Those big arms. That should have redisoriented the other guy, even though it didn't say it. And what we'll probably do is take some shots, try and land a 20. Trust me. Yeah, I didn't get it. Trust me to be the only one not hitting my low percentage shots. Overwatch and Overwatch. So these two are still disoriented. I think flashbangs actually last for two turns now. I can't remember. Got a guy coming in. Soylent slaying him. As that grunt slumps out of the window. And this Grenadier really doesn't know what to do. I don't, I don't know what the hell you're doing, Grenadier. That was just stupid. That looks stupid, that was stupid. Let's get some grenades in on this guy. Actually, with this many 39s, we don't need to spend it, I don't think. With this many shots, even at 39, we should be able to slay with the AK. Let's move Ocelot Seems doable. up. We want to take those back shots more than we want to take front shots, because we want the front people uh, to ideally be spending time overwatching. So what we're going to do here is just try and get as many people as we can uh, taking these half cover shots on this guy. Let's reload of Soylent. Reloaded. Let's get some volume of fire running here. Go, go, go! Oh, never mind. Soylent is just a god. Alright, still, volume of fire. Rock and roll! Rock and roll! Beim nächsten Mal treppe ich ihn! It's killer time. Get it together. All right, Ocelot's got him. You see that one? Taken down to Funky Town. So in the end, with flashbangs, that wasn't too difficult. That's one thing I definitely fell of XCOM 2's vanilla flashbangs, is they were a little bit too much of a one-size-fits-all problem. You'd uh, run into fights and just spam flashbangs, basically, uh, and the enemy couldn't really do anything about it, and then you'd, you'd kill them all. One thing about Long War 1, with its flashbangs, is that if you flashbang sectoids, they still could psychic attack you without really caring. Um, flashbangs work well on floaters, uh, and maybe even thin men, uh, but, you know, they didn't work on drones early on either. Um, you know, there was a lot more, I think, to counter flashbangs. Uh, in XCOM 2 Vanilla, I know for sure, flashbangs felt a little bit overpowered. Too much of a one key for every problem solution. Uh, we'll see if that's what it's like in uh, Long War 2 as we develop. We'll keep an eye on those flashbangs. But at the end of the day, we did outnumber those guys pretty heavily, and this is just the first mission. Let's go ahead and uh, get some Overwatch running. Because I think we're going to have another pod from the left hearing those gunshots and moving in to investigate. And here they come, we got a sectoid. And a sentry, is that it? Just two guys? Although they bear some resemblance to the sectoid. Oh no. During the invasion, structure now human DNA. They are stronger than ever. With an even greater psionic potential. I'm a bit worried uh, for these guys if this is all they've got, if they've just got two guys. I think they're gonna need a few more. Let's move up with uh Beegs. Tired of around. Oh god, I'm a little bit too close to that explosive tank now. I probably should move these back. That could be nasty. 
Uh, we'll move up Soylent instead. I guess that'll be okay. I'm gonna bring Biggs back because I don't trust that propane tank Let's do this. at all. In fact, I shouldn't have even moved Soylent there. But Soylent can chuck a grenade in. Hell, I think if I hit... I wish I could, was just allowed to shoot that right now because I think if I hit that with a grenade, it might even extend far enough to blow up that sectoid's cover, which would be very nice. Let's see who else can maybe do that. We bring him across. I think you're probably it, uh, Soylent. Let's chuck this grenade over and see if we can't accomplish exactly that. I think it'll collateral all that cover, hopefully. Heads down. We'll see. Yep, Soylent making it rain, just like we like it. In a role that should feel very familiar to him. Bauer's gonna move in to endlish this sectoid's life. And we got the 65 flank. Oh, the crit town. Not a, not a high damage crit, but the crit town nonetheless, Bauer, and I respect that. Uh, let's see here. Glenn's gonna get that sentry. So let's just move... Uh, kill right across. If you say so. For the follow-up on that sectoid. Follow up. That's not a great shot, Kyoro. It's not an ideal shot there. You gotta hold your ground. Who else can get a shot on this guy? Probably gonna bring you, uh... I don't know who else can. We gotta bring you up if we wanna get a shot on that sectoid. Not ideal. Let's see if I bring Hulk across if he can do it. Yeah, if I bring Hulk across, he can do it. Uh, let's move friendly up first. You say so. Cause I want to see if we're going to draw any more contacts, but I think this might be it. Oh, apparently if I move Hulk here, I can see him anyway. And no. Might still be that bug that Vanilla XCOM 2 has, where when you blow up cover, it doesn't update until you move. Which is a bit silly. But I don't know, it doesn't seem like that. On the margins. Really, On really grazing this sectoid. He's taking a long time to go down. Let's reload an Ocelot. Ready to go. That could have been a grenade, actually. Might have been better. Uh, but we'll bring AO up instead. You see that we're gonna go for the finishing shot on this sectoid that we've been looking for. He is taking so much fire. Is this all we have left? I might have to grenade that stupid sectoid instead at this rate. That's ridiculous. If I can get a flash to pin that sentry down, that should be fine. I'm not taking the 71. Because that guy's going to flank me. Bombs away. Finish him off, friendly. Blow him to hell. Get those freaks. There you go. When is someone going to port the Glen friendly voice pack from Long War to Long War 2? That's what I need to know. I would uh, have to install that mid-campaign. Okay, watch it, friendly. You're good. Whoa. He's got nothing left. His cover's on fire. Push in and oh yeah, friendly. I think this is the last guy in the map. What's over there? You gotta get in there and you gotta finish him off, friendly. Finish the fight. Ooh! That's the way we do it. Check it before you get too close. Positive confirmation. Area secured. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. All right. Not a bad run there. Uh, I don't think I deserve the flawless after that second activation, but. With the liberal application of flashbangs, and with the very good cover we were already in from the start, uh, that wasn't too bad for us. It just added more meat to an otherwise straightforward uh, frontal no-flanking firefight, which we were able to come out on top of, because if you're in a frontal no-flanking firefight, and you can just flashbang every enemy you can see, well, it's a pretty simple way to control people, and that's uh, true whether you're in Long War 2 or you're in XCOM 2. Uh, but let's get into the game proper after uh, a successful Operation Gatecrasher. made it back whole and the aliens paid the price. Great work, Commander. All right, so let's take a look and see what these boys want to be. Awo is going to be our technical. Awo likes to burn things, so that is not surprising. Uh, I guess I should do a little bit of an explanation of what I know so far, which is the technical is your flamer and rocket class. We're going to have a good time with them. Soylent wants to be a shinobi this time around. He does not want to be a gunner or a grenadier, as I would have expected. He wants to sneak around and stab people, so we'll see how many people he can stab in this run. Or if he simply dies in the process. Friendly. 
that is very apt. Wants to be the best class in the game, which is infantry slash ranger. Not surprising. Heinrich going for the grenades. Go for that scorched earth mentality. Hulk, our sharpshooter. Oh, there goes my alarm. To let me know it's time to kill aliens. Hulk, our sharpshooter here. Modeling that nice SVD with his beautiful bare arms. Kilroy. The cargo short specialist with his little drone buddy. And if we go up the back here, me and Ocelot bringing it up the back. Ocelot, our gunner. Wheeling that PKM. And that leaves Beegs to, of course, be our assault. Uh, the other best class, uh, but this other best class probably has one of the lower life expectancies. At least in my Long War campaigns and Long War 1 campaigns. So we'll see how I fare through this one. But honestly, I love being an assault, so that's not a bad choice at all. We picked us up a stock, which works very differently in Long War 2. Officer Corpse, Drooper Corpse, some alien alloys, crystals, and some supplies. Incoming transmission. Commander? What are we want for research? I think I'm gonna pull a vanilla strategy and just pull straight into modular weapons to get those upgrades applied to my guns. I'm gonna pull straight onto a guerrilla tactics school to get leaders in the mix as quickly as possible. Guerrilla tactics. Let's have a look at who else is in our uh, soldier list today. Alright. Friendly. Bauer, Soylent, Hulk, Awo, Kilroy, Ocelot, and Beegs, but who else? Well, there's your boy, right there, coming back to lead us out. Ramirez from the tutorial. Remove Dacronon is here. Jill's back. I was worried, uh, I wasn't sure whether to include the first, uh, live and legendary, uh, victors in this character pool. I'm worried because Long War 2 is going to be more punishing and I want to see these guys having made it through a whole campaign get themselves killed on their second tour of duty, but that's just not how life works. We need to take down Advent again in New Game Plus and we need our best heroes back. Speaking of which, Bone Daddy's here. Suarez better be here. I'm going to be very upset. Drake. Urban. Organ. Clutchmaster. <laughs> we got the Bradford himself here. James back. Van Dorn is hizzy back. Well, actually, what the hell am I saying? Van Dorn was never here in the first place. But Van Dorn is here, I should say. Van Dorn uh, didn't really get much of a run in the last campaign. I guess he's kind of back. He was more our mage gimmick we never really used. But here he used to be an actual soldier this time around. Uh, and Jane Kelly, for all you vanilla fans, is here in the, uh, in the main uniform. Now, where the hell is Suarez? There she is. Well, that's very quickly going to be a pickup because you can't have a bone daddy about a Suarez, so I'm going to pick her up uh, as soon as supplies allow. Uh, I'm going to hold on to her for right now for the next mission. Uh, and we have Constance Shade as well, who I'm sure if she's not a sniper, I'll be very upset. But we'll see what she wants to be this time around. You know what? I can't. I, I can't even wait. Get Suarez in here right now because you know what? It's not right. It's not right to keep those two apart, so get him in here. So we've got the full Live and Legendary 1 team in here, I believe. The full Live and Legendary Street team. We've got quite a roster. Let's hope we can uh, have them make it through. I don't want to see any of these people go down, but I guess that's the point. Let's get out into the world. Commander, good to see you on your feet again. The aliens have our entire world in their grip. Advent controls everything. And it's on us to take it all back. Resources and time are tight, Commander. It'll be up to you to decide how to best use both. The ship is yours. I mean, you're gonna be out there in the field too, Bradford. You're in the armory, I'm gonna use you, don't think I'm not. Okay, we can go to the black market. Black market works off supplies in this, so I'm probably not gonna jump straight to it. Uh, first thing I wanna do, uh, and keep in mind, don't use this as your uh, laws on how to play Long War 2, please don't, because I am as new to Long War 2 as most of you are. Uh, so, I'm just feeling my way out here. Uh, but let's have a look. Alright, so I can see... Uh, this is the new Haven management system, basically, which I have a, a basic understanding of. Uh, essentially, uh, you, each Haven that you unlock uh, can recruit new resistance agents, and these resistance agents can be 
uh, put on the doing different things. Supply gets you with some more supplies. Recruit gets more people, and Intel gathers you. Uh, I'm not sure if it also gives you intelligence, but I think the main thing it does is it finds you missions to go out on. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give like a little pistol here, and I'm going to send him as an advisor uh, to oversee basically what's happening in that region. So if we go back out, and we click on that haven, we can go ahead and apply him or any of our XCOM soldiers right here as advisors. You can also do it with engineers and scientists, but we don't have them. Uh, when you put an XCOM soldier as an advisor, they're better at it the higher rank they are, the more experienced they are. Uh, but what they do is they contribute to the recruit job. So they bring in more resistance members uh, and make it easier to find more soldiers to recruit as well. Uh, and they also look for advent infiltrators inside the haven to keep it secure. So we'll leave Hulk as my sharpshooter there to advise this haven for right now. And I think with Hulk uh, helping out with recruitment, what I'm probably going to do is actually, having read more on what the Intel job does from the in-game encyclopedia, I'm probably going to devote more resources uh, to it early, because it's very important in deciding how quickly, uh, according to the, what the in-game encyclopedia tells me anyway, how quickly uh, you can find jobs, uh, missions, and the, the longer it takes you to find a mission, uh, the less time you have to infiltrate it. So if we have a couple of guys on intel, uh, we can get on that a bit quicker. I'm going to leave a couple of guys there and leave one on recruit. Uh, leave three on supply. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and use the Avenger itself to scan for intel as well to boost that. These findings will likely prove crucial to our ongoing efforts, Commander. Alright, we got some research. Scopes, laser sight stocks, yada yada yada. So once we get the proving grounds, we can create these upgrades. And more importantly, we can apply them to our weapons right now. I think what I'm going to do next is get resistance communications uh, running so that I can start building more havens and get them building up uh, quicker. And we're just going to keep on intel scanning and looking for missions to complete. What do we got? Okay, we've got a very light rescue contacts and free rebels mission in the eastern US. Operation Potent Gears. Uh, how many people are we going to get here? Four resistance personnel. So that's a nice little boost to our haven, assuming we get to send them there. Let's go ahead and check out how long we've got to do this operation. Okay, the mission expires in three days and 18 hours. That is... Not a good look for a mission, I'm afraid. That is not at all a good look. Not on a mission with a timer. I don't think we can honestly do that one. Because as you can see, as we start to add people in here, we're very quickly going to take longer to infiltrate. Because the more people and equipment you put into a squad, the longer it takes to infiltrate. Uh, and if you don't infiltrate enough, uh, then you're going to get a very bad run uh, of that mission. You're going to basically... Infiltrating is like a scale, 0 to 200%. Uh, if you infiltrate uh, within uh, the 3 days, 18 hours completely, uh, for example, if this said 3 days, 18 hours here, we'd have 100% infiltration. And then the mission's pretty average then. Uh, if you get under that, there's more enemies and evacs are harder and crap like that. Uh, and if you infiltrate better, uh, you can get bonuses in that sense. You can see that even just sending two people in, uh, we're screwed in this sense. So I think we just can't do this mission. So we can't res rescue those contacts just yet. I'm going to let that one go, I think. Let's see what else we got. Rescue VIP from Advent Vehicle. Free and important prisoner. Baseline enemy activity extremely light. And the reward is Dr. Caleb Cartwright, engineer. Alright, let's have a look at this one. You really got to pick your battles. Okay, so in this case, we've got five days... Uh, mission expiration, uh, base infiltration being six days. Let's have a look at what we can do here. Alright, so, basically I don't want to go too low on the squad size because it can get a, a bit hairy, even of extremely light contact I feel, and I want to get some people promoted up. So I'm going for a six-man squad here, and again, this is trial and error, I don't really know what I'm doing, and I'm sure I'll look back on this months in the future and just really hate every decision I make. Uh, but the point is, right now this is what we're going with, and we're going with, uh, the best we can kind of come up with. So we're going to go uh, on a rescue VIP from Advent Vehicle mission, which means, assumedly there's going to be a timer, and we need to push very quickly through an objective, grab a VIP, and then make it to an evac, without getting bogged down. So we're taking Technical, uh, Grenadier, 
Ranger and Assault so that we can blow our way through cover and just in general uh, really aggressively engage enemies throughout this mission. We have a couple of Rooks uh, and a couple of medkits. A lot of flashbangs still, a lot of grenades is the general idea. Now, the mission expires in five days. We're going to take seven days, 17 hours to fully infiltrate. So what I'm hoping is that by spending an intel boost, I can hopefully make up the difference and have near 100%. I'm not sure how much intel... Uh, I'm not sure how much infiltration an intel boost gives you. Haven't really used one before, you know? Uh, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully enough, otherwise this mission could be a lot harder. Because I'm bringing that bigger squad, takes that extra time to get in there. Um, we're just taking a lot of rifles. Uh, got a shotgun on Beegs. Uh, and an SMG on Dow to keep moving quick while he's grenading. Uh, but apart from that, uh, pretty standard. So let's hope these guys can do their best on this operation. Let's send them out. Sky Ranger deployed. Squad green to deploy. They're gonna start infiltrating. For now, we carry on. Alright, so then we got another Gorilla Op over here. Extremely light contact, 21 Intel. Hack workstation and Advent facility and find a lead. Uh, I'm really not sure which missions have timers and which don't. I think most of them still have timers, I'm not sure. I'll just assume this one does as well. This is why I didn't take my specialist on that last mission, because we're going to want a specialist for our Gorilla Op here. So let's see how long we've got on this one. The mission expires in 23 hours. Uh, excuse me? I don't really know if I, if I can do that one. Um, we could go for like a very light attempt, basically. Where's Kilroy? Even a lone Kilroy, it'll take you three days to infiltrate. I don't think this mission's happening somehow. <laughs> not gonna lie. That one's not happening, so that one we detected way too late. What's going on with my Haven here? I've still got two guys on intel, isn't that enough? I guess not. So we're just gonna let that one go away. I'm sure you will find the results to be as intriguing as I do, Commander. Alright, we've got resistance comes up, so now we can... ...go ahead and make more havens, which is nice. We also just have resistance radio, which costs 60 intel to research. We don't want to spend that right now. Uh, but when we do it, we can make some ground-based relays. Uh, it says here our havens will be more efficient at their operations. And it will be easier for us to reach some of the outlying regions. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, for now, let's go into Alien Biotech, though. And uh, let's just keep on going for now. Commander, we can now work to establish contact with local resistance groups operating out of regions around the globe. Once we've collected sufficient intel to make contact, we'll need to scan the target region for the operative signal. Okay, we're gonna keep on going. Now, it doesn't even tell me how much boost is going to help, but obviously I'm going to use it here because 63 is shoddy. Uh, so we'll go ahead and boost that up. I don't know how much it costs. You can spend 30 intel to boost the infiltration rate of this squad by 50% for this mission. Ooh! Well, there you go. That's, uh... It's not cumulative. It's like multiplicative. It's not like it adds 50%. It just makes you infiltrate 50% faster. But, uh, that's put us up to 96, which is pretty damn close to what we want. Uh, so very light, rescue VIP from Advent Vehicle, free an important prisoner. We're going in for Dr. Caleb Cartwright. Let's send a squad in and let's see what we can do here. The Resistance is asking for our help in rescuing a VIP currently being held by Advent in this region. We're moving in to neutralize any alien forces protecting the transport vehicle. Lock down the AO and secure the target package. Alright, Operation Dawn Shadow, moving in on the Advent Patrol Precinct in Toronto with our, I believe it was six-man team, couple of rooks, four specialists, four squaddies, and we're going to see what we can do here. Uh, it's quite scary with Long War 2 because you really, you're given the rope and you're allowed to hang yourself with it on what missions you think are doable and what aren't, especially at this early point in playing Long War 2 where I have no experience to call on. It can be kind of difficult, I think, to really know uh, what you're meant to do. Uh, how hard you meant to go, but through trial and error we'll learn. Let's just hope we don't lose anybody uh, from that trial and error. That'll be Operation Dawn Shadow next time. See you then.